Hey guys, so it's Dan, we're back on 3DS Max, and um, I thought I'd show you guys, um, mainly beginners, so if you're really good at Max and are uh, quite advanced, um, this probably won't help you, but who knows, maybe you will learn something. So, first of all, we're going to make a box. Um, first of all, just a quick tip, if you control drag while you're making a box rather than the traditional drag and move, um, it'll just expand the box from where you are rather than... Um, you often to draw the base, it'll just make it like that. So anyway, we've got a we've got a box, and then I'm going to put a cylinder on top. So I'm going to make it so it has about ten sides, and we're going to remove the height segments. And we're going to check auto grid, and that's going to let us draw it on top of this cube. So right click, and we have our basic scene set up. Um, I'll show you what I like to do. I like I've got my material editor here. I like to put um, just a default grey on both and then go into this modifier section here and change it to black and that's gonna give you a black wireframe on like um, grey objects and I think that's really nice I just like it it's better than clay in my opinion because when you got like selected um, it goes red and that's can be hard to see sometimes on the clay background so that's why I like to go unshaded so anyway, you saw me there change that to an edit poly, you're going to want to do that for both. And, um, yeah, I'm going to be showing you guys um, a couple cool tools. I'm just basically going to combine these into one mesh um, the hard way, but hopefully in the process you guys will learn a few things that you can apply to other models. Um, for the actual, um, if I was going to make these two the same mesh, I'd just right click attach. And then they'd be this, you know, the same object with separate elements, and that's how I do it usually. But that's not going to show us too many tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach this again, and we're going to make them separate objects. So that way I can show you how we do it with more tools. So um, we're going to want to press F to come into our front view, and press F3, and then we're going to get like a nice wireframe. We can get rid of the grid by pressing G there. And just line it up. It doesn't matter too much where it is because for what we're doing, it's not going to matter. So we got we got this. We can see our cylinder, and we want to move it down so it's slightly into the cube. So you can see that there. And make sure you got it on Edit Poly. And we're going to want to go up here. Um, and if you don't have this menu here, it should look like this. You can hit this drop down here, and then that's going to bring you a whole load of new options. Try not to get too frightened. Um, it's not too scary, so you're going to hit swift loop here, and we're going to want to manually just do it by eye, don't worry too much, we can sort this out later, and you just want to put a swift loop in where the cube meets the cylinder, so we'll go ahead and do that, just put that in there, can be a bit fiddly, but there you go, we did it, and now we can press P, Z, and that's going to bring us nice into a perspective and view and put it on our screen for us and now we have this and um, it doesn't look like much has changed but um, what we have actually done is we've made it so um, so we've now got our edge on the exact location where they intersect it's not too exact but it doesn't really matter for this case because like I said <laughs> it's going to be quite an inefficient way of doing it but I'm just doing it for the sake of teaching you guys a few new tips so you want to click and drag over these here and hit control line that's going to inverse your selection that works for everything so we can do that for that and that's really helpful because if I tried to click and drag these sometimes if they were the same um, element it can be you know it can be really challenging to do that so um, just that that's quite a helpful tip you know if you can't get to them you can't see them and the F3 is not doing you any favours um, just click and drag select everything you can see and then Control I, and then we can delete that now. And now we've got um, the bottom of our um, cylinder isn't intersecting, and it's nice there with the edges. So um, let's grab our cube now, and we're going to go ahead and delete the top face of that. Make sure you got Edit Poly on, and I'm going to right-click and attach, and then click this. So now we got now these are the same object, but I'm going to show you like a couple things, a way we can actually get this. So a lot of people, if they wanted to fill in this gap, they just double click this edge and double click this edge and then they'd come over here to the border tool 
and they'd look for cap and they just click cap and it looks like it's worked but if we move this up you'll see it hasn't worked now the reason for that is cap tool looks for the easiest way of doing things and that um, is just to basically bridge it's the easiest way we could do this is just to bridge that and it would usually be but like I said for the sake of teaching your tools that's it's important to remember that these aren't you know set in stone ways of doing things so how I do this is I'd bridge I just go around bridging I'd only bridge one at a time um, so that's not working for some reason let's have a look here should be working fine oh what the hell oh okay looks like we haven't got the bottom of this deleted so we'll just go ahead and select that um, what's going on here let's have a look let's move this up ah so what happened before is when we capped it it capped the cube so it bridged the cube and then it added the end gone back the one that was um, at the bottom of the cylinder so there's something else to keep in mind so when you do cap it not only finds the shortest thing for it, it does it for each element so if I did it here for example it would cap each object so there you go I, I just learned something there so see even I'm learning things so now we have this we you don't need to get rid of this top hang on we'll just um, cap that for now so there you go now we now we have that section there so this is underneath here it's now empty and we will be able to bridge this so let's there you go and we just go around and we bridge the closest to parallel we can and we just do that across and you see some of them are nice up uh, line up quite nice others don't but that's okay we can sort that out later so now we've got a mixtures of quads and tries for these gaps um, now there's a couple issues you can run into when capping these now they are quads that's fine you can use quads but sometimes um, what will happen is your bridge won't work properly now this is it seems really weird but it does happen so we let's say we have it like this yeah and it looks like it's it's bridged what nicely it looks like it's done well but it's actually done that we've got two vertices over each other this does happen it's a weird thing sometimes happens to me and then what happens when we try and cap is we get a selection a bit like this you may have seen it in the past and it looks like it's done it fine but if we in fact move this up um sorry if we detach this and we have a look at it you'll see that it in fact isn't what what it looks like it is an end on and it's just it's just real messy we don't want to be doing that so what we'll do instead is we'll do it like this we'll just bridge it off so make sure we bridge it here and rather than doing the typical um we can bridge like this as well always remember if this if you wanted to bridge a, qu um, a quad like this and it was like that um a lot of people go to bridge like this and that won't work and that's because the faces are adjacent so if i were to do this remember this is the same shape it still has the same vertices and they're in the same order if you had this shape instead you'd bridge like this wouldn't you and that works you see so one thing to always bear in mind is when you're dealing with something like this don't bridge like that just because it seems like the obvious bridging point the actual bridging point is here to here and that's because if we move this vertice up it's that's how you'd make it into a square whereas moving this vertice up it, you know it doesn't make it into a square so you if you wanted to bridge you could do it like that and that's how you do that and you now have a quad there and let's just have a look at the tries here you can see that's triangulated nicely don't worry too much about that turn i just pressed that's just um you know that's just me showing you that it would triangulate nice in engine so we do the same here and now this is where we get to an interesting thing how do we deal with tries so we could cap it but remember that problem i told you about before when we were talking about the quad that can still happen here even with a try so i'm going to show you how to bridge a try now it's got a couple more steps to it but it's still equally as helpful and um those of you who've seen my f1 car this helped me a lot on that because that that caused many issues so um those of you who don't know let me just delete this hang on up here if you double click if you just hold an edge and you shift click it or shift scale it i think it works still yeah shift scale it um it will create an edge in whatever direction so um, what we can do is we can actually grab one of these it doesn't matter which one I like to go from the bottom of the cylinder but you can do it from here if you want so 
I'm going to grab it from here because it's just easier to see. And we're going to click and drag it out. Now, one thing a lot of people do with the gizmo, this is a gizmo by the way, this thing with the three axes, is they click and drag via this, and that really messes up in 3D space sometimes. So it's important to know that you can go um, in all three directions. So if I just move the whole object here, we can go in the Y, in the X, in the Z, or we can do a mixture of the two. We can do like that, we can do like that, and we can do um, like that. And then we can do all three, which is where we start getting problems, and that's where I'd advise against it. Um, you know, and that's where problems start arising. So, what we can do to, um, you know, avoid these things happening is we can, um, you know, we can always click and drag like that, and that's going to stop it going veering off over there into bloody Netherland. And sometimes you'll get it so when you do that, it'll go all the way over there, and you think, Jesus Christ, what a mess. So, we're just going to do it by the Y and the X. We're going to scale it out like that. Don't worry about it intersecting too much here. We'll deal with that in a sec. So now we still have our edges selected and we can move this up and down. Don't worry about that too much right now because what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and click collapse. And that's going to turn them two vertices into one another. Now, those of you who know about target world, it would be the same as doing that. But what it does is it meets in the center of those two. So it's a bit similar to weld, only it's like um, no restraint. So let's say we did use weld. So we weld these and you see weld has the same effect but rather than changing a slider we're just clicking one button and it works with vertices um, and it also works with edges but because we have edges selected we'll just do that so now we have one vertice here and we've got a triangle but it's not attached to this vert now a lot of people I've seen do it is they come up here and they put vert snap on we'll go over that in another video but they can put vert snap on um, let me turn off my axis constraints ignore that so we have um, a lot of people do that and they think oh that's okay it's not okay because now we have a gap because when we move this up you see now we have a gap here that's not very good because if your if your model would be animated by an animating team or something like that when they rigged it um, part of your model would be invisible and it just causes an absolute world of pain for your animation team and you don't want that you know that's gonna get you into a, a bit of trouble like dude why aren't you doing this so some people could do that and then you can weld these together so we see that now these will be welded and you see that works nicely um, but we're not going to do it like that, we're gonna, I'm going to show you target weld so target weld's awesome because what it lets you do is it lets you choose the location so I did that by right clicking on the vert and um, it doesn't matter what vert you have selected the first vertice you click will be the one that's moving and the second one you click will be where it's moving to. So let me try that again. Maybe it is. It does have an influence on what you've got selected. No, it doesn't. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So maybe if I tried it like this. Um, yeah, see, it works there. But it doesn't matter which one you have selected. It's always going to go one to the other. And let me try it here. See, it's all. it doesn't matter. I've got this one down here selected, but I can still move these ones to one another. Um, sometimes it doesn't work, but that's just usually done because of bridging and stuff and then there's problems like I said do modeling like this causes you problems that's why we want to fix it so we just click the vertice we want to move and then we get this nice line showing us where it's going to move to and we click this other one and it's going to move down and that's going to weld it perfectly for us without us messing around with the settings and um, some people after learning the collapse tool will be happy to collapse but remember that does it in between the two so now that that it's not straight anymore see because it puts it in the center of both of them whereas target world target world's nice because it just takes it straight down to it and then we can just repeat repeat that and like i said we can do it on any of them and um, the same process and then you just um target weld that one to there and then we have this cool um personally i like to triangulate my mesh manually because when you put it into engine, this is what it will end up looking like for the game. These are the triangles. We see the end on gets triangulated weirdly into like a hexagon that's been triangulated again. It's like that's why we control our end so let me just delete that. And we can do it our way of doing it, which is like that. And then that will make that triangulate nicely. You'll see it'll be nice. See? And then we have um, my way, and I think Andy does it the same way. 
um, which is where we do that. But that causes problems of its own. Like each of them have their own advantages, and you know there's reasons for it. Because now we can't actually shift quick these. We have to use similar. But don't worry about that too much. Don't worry about the same gun. Let's get back down to here. So we want to triangulate this. Now you don't have to if you don't want to. There's no problem because it will get triangulated eventually. But me personally, I like to do mine manually. So. And what we can do is we can click a vert and then we can control click another and we can draw a line and that's just using this connect tool over here. You guys may need to um, scroll up and down this or expand and unexpand but I like to work with two because my monitor is nice and big. So now we have, um, you know, we have these two columns and I just find my connect tool here and I just click the two vertices and I just do that and I do that all the way around and then even the ones that are already qualified, I just, you know, I just do this. And now we have three lines going from every vertice, and now these are all triangles. And that just manually controls this, you know, which is good. You know, I like it. I like it like that. Um, there's a quad here and here, but that's all right. They're, they're good. They're nice quads. Um, but these triangles here, these are nice. And these are nice. And, yeah, so now we've got this mesh. It's all one. We can... Um, we can grab this. Remember, remember what I told you about this. A lot of people would go around doing this to select these, and you can do that if you want. But sometimes it's easier to select the bottom, select the top, and now we've got everything selected. And then Control I. Like, let let's have a mini time here. So, you know, let's just work it out. So, this is me just Control clicking it, make a mistake, Control Z it, and that's how long it took me to do it like that. And then the other way, a lot faster. You know, with the, with competitions and stuff, it's all about speed, and these are good ways of increasing your speed. Another way of doing it is to get all these vertices here, and then do that, and then alt click these and alt click these. You know, there's loads of different ways of doing it, um, especially if you don't miss. So, anyway, that um, I suppose begins a new chapter. I'm going to start doing like tips and tricks for modeling and tips and tricks for unwrapping. That'll be the first one for modeling hopefully you guys learned something i'm sure you did and um yeah um see you next time